There are a ton of extremely useful built-in plugins that come with Final Cut Pro and in this video I'm going to show you how powerful 10 of them are with a cool trick on how to use each one. But first, thanks to Motion Elements for sponsoring this video. Motion Elements is a one-stop stock content marketplace with footage, animations, video templates, images, stock music, sound effects and more. Use the link down below and the 70% off coupon code to get unlimited downloads right now. First up on the list is the color curves effect. You can find it under the color category or even easier, you can head over to the color inspector and just add a color curves adjustment right here. It's great for adding some contrast into the scene. So you can boost your whites, drop your blacks, or if you want the black areas in the shot to be sort of faded like that, you can create the faded shadows effect. I'll just bring that down. And you can also affect the red, green, and blue values on a curve. So you could add more red to the highlights, for example, take some blue out of the shadows, that sort of thing. But what's really nice and what a lot of people don't know, I'll just undo these two, is that you can change this color from red to any color you like. So for example, if you wanted a quick teal and orange look, you can set this one to orange and let's go set this one to teal or cyan over here. You can add a little bit of orange in the highlights and subtract it from the shadows. And then in the cyan, actually this is aqua, let's go a little more cyan. You can drop the cyan or the teal in the highlights and you can boost it in the shadows. So playing around with these two curves, you can very quickly get that really nice sought after teal and orange look. Number two is the draw mask effect. The draw mask effect is super versatile. It allows you to create mask wipe transitions, masking objects out of a scene, putting text behind objects and other cool effects. I'll show you a simple mask wipe transition quickly. With this clip selected, I have my draw mask effect applied. And if I scrub through here, you can see how this mask animates past this bar to reveal the next shot. So I'm going to zoom out here so you can see the full mask. And essentially all it is, is just a mask that you animate frame by frame to reveal your next shot. If I hit control V to show my keyframes, you can see how almost every frame has a keyframe and I've just adjusted that throughout the duration of this clip to reveal that shot underneath. Number three is the Gaussian blur effect, which is really handy for blurring out sensitive information. Let's say like a license plate on a car, or in this case, let's say this guy wants to be anonymous. I can head over to the blur category of effects and drag and drop my Gaussian blur effect onto his face. Final Cut Pro will detect that that is a face. I can let go to create a mask, and then I can head over to the shape button here to adjust the mask and fine tune it the way I'd like. I can also use this outside circle to decrease the feathering. And let's say I want to adjust these Gaussian blur parameters, maybe 40 for the amount and 60 for both horizontal and vertical blur. Now, because this is not a static shot, as we move, you'll see that the mask drifts off his face and we want that mask to stick to his face. So it's an easy fix. You just hit the tracker button and hit analyze. Final Cut Pro will analyze this really quickly. And now we have a mask that is tracked to his face. Number four is the channel EQ, which has so many uses from EQing your voice to EQing sound effects to make them sound different. But one of the ways I use it most often is to add an EQ to my music tracks, which I then use to dip the mid frequencies, usually around one kilohertz. And I drop that frequency by about 15 decibels. What this does is it cuts a space or a gap in the music to allow my voice to cut through the mix and to be more audible in my videos. Now, a quick tip for you, instead of having to do this every single time, once you've added the EQ, which you can do using the shortcut command alt E, and you've gone ahead and you've dropped the frequency by about 15 decibels, you can then head over to the save effects preset button on your inspector window. I have two applied here now for this example, so I'm just going to check the one that we're supposed to have and I'll uncheck volume. I'll call this music EQ. You can put it in any category you like. I'll leave it in Brad West and then hit save. I already have it in my custom presets. So I'm going to hit cancel. And if you head over to the custom audio presets under Brad West, there's the music EQ. So now in future, you can go ahead and select all of your songs and just double click on that music EQ preset to apply that EQ to all of your music tracks. Number five is the HSL curves effect. And I'm going to show you two instances where this effect comes in very handy. You can find it in your color category right over here, or again, even easier color inspector, click over here and you can add your hue saturation curves. In the first example, I'm going to change this woman's jacket. So on the hue versus hue color picker, I can select it and select her jacket. You'll see three points are created here. 
and I'm going to grab this red point and I can adjust the color. Let's make it blue. Now you can see it's also affected the red tones in her face. So what we need to do is add a shape mask. Now in this case, what we've done is we've actually affected the hue versus hue inside the mask, which is not what we want. So I'm going to reset that and just on the outside section of the mask, quickly redo that. So we'll just go back and change this to blue. Now I'll select the shape mask again, and I'm going to adjust this mask around this woman's face. And I'm going to adjust the feathering so that none of this jacket is affected. Something like that should do. And then again, I'm going to use the tracker to just track this mask to her face. And just like that, we've changed this jacket from a red jacket to a blue jacket. But the second way to use the HSL curves adjustment, and probably the way I use it more often, is to match colors in a scene. So if you look at this Insta360 clip, you'll see that the grass is pretty green, but then on this DJI Osmo Pocket 3 clip, the grass is pretty yellow and very saturated. So when you go between the two shots, the grass doesn't really match. What I can do is add a hue versus saturation curves adjustment to this DJI Osmo clip to match the grass a little better between the clips. If we open this effect up, you'll see that I slightly adjusted the hue. I made it a little more green as opposed to orange, and I dropped the saturation way down because it was way too saturated initially. So those two simple little adjustments make matching these two cameras much easier. Number six is a cathedral effect, which is essentially a type of reverb effect. So I've cut together this little short piece of music and I don't like the way the song ends. The cathedral effect will help me fix that. So have a quick listen to this. If I want a more dramatic ending, I can open up the effects browser, head over to spaces and then look for cathedral or cathedral 2. I'll drop that onto this part of my audio. And if I play that back, you'll hear the reverb that I've got here on the second part of this music. So I want the reverb to start at the beginning of this music cut, but I also want it to fade in. So I'll go ahead three or four frames and I'll keyframe the amount here. Maybe I'll even increase this amount to 75 and I'll go back to the beginning of the clip by pressing the up arrow, or you can use your left and right arrow keys to navigate to the beginning of the clip, and I'll set the amount to zero. So now what happens is over time, you'll see the amount slowly increase to 75%. Let me play that back and you can hear how much more dramatic this ending is for this track. Number seven is the glow effect. One way I really like using the glow effect is to add a glow to titles. So you can find the glow effect under the light category. I'll just drag and drop that onto my text. And then I can head over to the effects here and we have one slider to adjust the amount of glow. That's nothing, that's maximum. And I would usually dial it back and have a bit more of a subtle glow like this. Number eight is the compressor. This is an audio effect I use all the time. And what it does is allow you to increase the volume of the softer parts of your audio without letting the louder parts of your audio get too loud. And you can find it in the levels category of effects under audio. And I'm going to add that to my voiceover clip. And then I'm going to open up the parameters right here. Now, I know all these buttons and knobs might overwhelm some people, but the threshold is essentially at which dB level the compressor will kick in. The ratio determines how much compression there is. The makeup gain is basically going to boost the output by a certain number of dBs. Your knee is how soft that roll off is on the threshold. Your attack is how quickly the compressor kicks in and the release is how quickly the compressor disengages. So you can tweak these to get the sound you like, but if that's too complicated, you can simply head over to the presets here, go to voice and look for soft vocals compressor in the case of this voiceover. And I might just boost the ratio a little bit. If you look at what happened visually on the timeline, I'll disable this compressor and you can see all the softer parts have been lifted up without the louder parts getting too loud. Number nine is the custom LUT effect. You can find that in the color category right over here. I'll double click to apply it and then you can choose a LUT. Now, most of the time you'll have to download some LUTs. There are loads of free ones online. There's some good paid ones. I have a LUT pack if you'd like to check it out. I'll leave a link down below. In this case, I'm just going to drop one of my Fire and Ice standard LUTs on here. Let's go with Purple Haze. And usually I don't leave the mix value at 100%, but you can adjust this to your liking to determine how much of this LUT you want applied to your footage. Number 10 is the balance color effect. We'll use this shot from the beginning again because we can see that the white balance here is slightly off. This doesn't look like true white. 
If you head over to the color category, you'll notice there's no color balance effect here, but there's a great little shortcut for it. With the clip selected, you can hit Command Option B and it will automatically apply the balance color effect. Another way to do it is to click on Modify and then Balance Color. By default, the method is set to automatic and generally what that does is it analyzes the shot and boosts the contrast or does what Final Cut Pro thinks needs to happen to make the shot look more balanced. What I like to do is change the method from automatic to white balance and then I can use this color picker tool to select an area of white in the shot. I'll select this woman's coat and now you can see how we had something that was slightly off white to a coat where the white looks more accurate. Don't forget to check out Motion Elements using the link down below and get 70% off when you use that coupon code as well. If you enjoyed these built-in effects for Final Cut Pro, then you'll enjoy my list of 10 totally free plugins for Final Cut Pro, so go ahead and watch that next.